Excellent. So, the praise and uh, thank God for uh, making me an instrument to stand before you all and I also thank Pastor for giving me this opportunity. So the base verse or the reference verse for the topic is from Romans chapter 6 verse 17 and 18. Romans chapter 6 verses 17 and 18. But God be thanked that through, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. So here, uh, Paul basically uh, mentions uh, two things, like uh, mentioning about our past state of life and the current state of life. So that's what he's comparing to. So when we say like past and present, it's always like uh, what's happening in the process. That's another thing we need to see. So I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, what the deliverance means and what change it brings in our lives through Jesus Christ. When we say deliverance, it's basically uh, action setting us free. So it could be in our physical or in our spiritual senses. So in our Old Testament, we keep seeing uh, there are references to people being delivered uh, from the power of others. So we see God rescues the people from their enemies and from the wrath of uh, the wicked people. Like we see how God is delivered from the hand of Pharaoh, the name of nature, and in the book of Esther, we see how he rescued them uh, from uh, Haman and others. And also, as a part of rescue, he also preserves them. So he preserves them uh, uh, during the famine, plagues, and uh, he gave them victory over their uh, Midianites, Ammonites, so all of those things we see, uh, that's what we see uh, from the Old Testament perspective. But here in this context, the deliverance is what it refers is to uh, how one's soul is rescued from the process of being taken to hell. So that's the process which Jesus did on the cross. So he rescues our soul that has been uh, set or been up for the hell. So he rescues us uh, from the sin and evil and from the death and from the eternal judgment. So that's the deliverance that he has given to us. So how this is possible? So we see in John um, chapter 31 verse 32, it's very simple truth, right? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Amen. So we have to know the truth. The truth is Jesus and how he came, lived as a mankind with a human uh, nature and take the cross for the remission of our sins. So as we understand the doctrine, that's what even in the, the base verse, uh, Paul uh, highlighted, you obey from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. So that's the key thing. So you have to understand the doctrine of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The purpose of his um, visit to this uh, world, being as a human, and to give us the deliverance. So what that deliverance brings in us? So when we say deliverance, the first thing is it brings a positive impact in our lives. So there's always a joy when we are relieved from some slavery or bondage. And more than that is when we see someone say that we are not condemned of our actions. Mm. So that's the core thing. So we see in Romans 8, 1. Now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So if you are in Christ, you are not condemned. Mm. The devil always comes with a plan, thought to condemn you, yeah. to put us. Yes. Uh, name on you, like uh, you are not worthy of this, mm -hmm. you are guilty of these things, you are set for this punishment, you are not worthy for this life, mm -hmm. why, what are you doing, you don't do all of these things. So that's the way devil always comes and uh, in, uh, makes us feel bad about the way that we do and he keeps condemns us. But when we are in Christ, we are no more condemned. Because of Jesus, he took the cross and he got all the punishments. He took the shame. So the, whatever the condemnation that we have to go through, he took the shame on him. And then he um, delivered us in the cross. So the condemnation part is the core thing that we 
see that brings a very positive impact because many a times, though more than a physical deliverance, the deliverance within our heart and the soul is more important. So that's what Jesus gives. Even in the same verse, if you see, uh, to how we can preserve it also. Because it says like, uh, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So that's another thing. So when we say we are not going to be content, we know we are Jesus Christ, but then we need to watch out what our heart's desires are. We should not let our heart's desire to go back to the sinful nature or the thoughts that you have been on to. So we should know how to control our mind, focusing back onto Jesus. Only way we can do it is like submitting ourselves to the complete will and purpose of God has entrusted on us. As we submit ourselves to His will, He will take care of us and He'll give a perfect life and also uh, the life after death, which is the eternal, eternity. The second thing uh, of deliverance is uh, He gets us close to Jesus. So, what He does is like, uh, if we see the same uh, base verse, Paul quotes that, though you were slaves to sin. So that's the past uh, state of us. So though we were slaves to sin. So when we were slaves, there is something happening in the background that, that we don't know. The Father God and Jesus are working together to make us get closer to Him. So we see that in the Leviticus uh, chapter 17, verse 11, there should be atonement to make for our souls. So that atonement can be made only by the blood. So we see that even in Hebrews 9.22, it says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Mm -hmm. So without shedding of blood, we cannot be delivered. So there is an agreement being made that the blood will be shed for us on the altar to redeem us. So that's the compensation. So he is like compensating our sins and our iniquities, our transgressions, he took all on him mm. as a compensation to redeem our souls. So that's the way he delivered us. The, also we see in Ephesians 2.13, But now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So by the blood of Christ, we have been brought near to Jesus. Yes. So this deliverance will actually get us close to Jesus. So that's why we have to be very uh, thankful to God and that's why the, the verse also states like, but be thankful to God. So we have to be always thankful to God as He has uh, put Himself on the cross. We see that He shed His blood till the very last drop and till it uh, comes out as a water from His body. So that's the way He uh, bore all our transgressions on the cross and delivered uh, us. And also it says in Romans 8.15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So it's the deliverance what we have received, it's not again we need to go back and fall onto fear of any other bondages. Because the spirit of adoption, what he has given us to go and call him as Abba Father. So it's like more than getting us close, he wants to make a divine relationship with us. So that's the plan for the eternity. So he wants to make us uh, call you and me as a son and daughter, and he gave the authority to call him as Abba Father. Amen. Amen. The third, uh, last thing um, here is Paul quotes, you now you became slaves of righteousness. So I like to put it in uh, Tamil, um, because it says in Tamil a little uh, uh, nicely. So, Pavi ki adimiyana na Pavi gal. Again, in the earth level, they say, "Now, Nidhi ki adimiyana." So, Nidhi ki adimiyana na Nidhi mangal. So, before um, when we say righteous, I don't feel uh, much, but when I say myself as a righteous, it's like uh, getting goosebumps. So, that's the thing God did on the cross. So, He made us righteous by giving his blood. Amen. So, how we can sustain it? Only by 
obeying to the word. So that's the thing that Paul also writes. So we need to know the doctrine, obey to the word of God, put all our faith, trust in Him, and make our life built on His cross and go forward with Him. So because the grace of God is expressed through His righteousness. It's the Christ's righteousness. He is righteous. The act He did on the cross is righteousness, and He's just uh, what has to inherit it. He's just giving that freely. So because of him, we are all made righteous. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.